definitely the interplay between the academic, the small company, large company, hospital, research uh, uh, institutions, all collaborating with the impact being felt in the hospitals with patients being treated, the amount of clinical trial work that goes on, all of that has attracted a very strong professional service community, whether it's in contract research, contract manufacturing. So it's, it all exists here and it's feeding off of each other. And it really is a, a privileged place to work out of because, because all the elements are here and, it's, and they're being drawn here more and more. You got obviously Moderna with the mRNA vaccines. You have Thermo Fisher right outside of town that basically made the majority of the PCR tests for the country, right? Uh, you have Ginkgo and, and uh, uh, the MIT Broad Institute working out how to do classroom testing for school reopening now in Massachusetts, Maine, and rolling it out nationwide, right? I mean, what did Silicon Valley do for the last year? Clubhouse or something, you know, right? Like, like we could all chat, like, I don't know, you can, apparently you could do some like sneaky room with your friends or something, you know, right? Like, like, like you know, and, and I, I think the reality is Silicon Valley's gotten good at business risk and developing software. Like, is this going to be the next hot thing? That, that, that's what the, the core skill is in Silicon Valley and developing software quickly. But, you know, doing sort of real tech stuff with technical risk, I think they've gotten a little bit skittish. You know, when I started, biotech was a little blip next to a gigantic 128 computer industry. And I always used to think that we're going to be this kind of uh, also ran in that field. Uh, unfortunately for Boston, a lot of computing industry moved out to Silicon Valley and populated that. And biotech, interestingly, very much got advanced in that same kind of San Francisco environment because of the amount of risk capital and, 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 and people who were there. I would say that, that the, the kind of the Silicon Valley equivalent in our space is clearly Boston now. And, and I think we just have to do everything we can to protect it, to grow it, and to have its reach expand to the whole world. That's the other thing that's different nowadays. You know, 50 years, 40 years ago, whatever you did locally stayed locally. Now you have this global reach so that you don't have to be in Boston to be in Boston and to be in the ecosystem of Boston. So all good trends from my point of view. Everyone's been living biology for the last year, right? Proteins are on the cover of the New York Times, right? My parents know what PCR is all of a sudden. And so there's this moment where there's going to be public awareness, I think, of how integral this technology is in our lives. And I expect that's also going to lead to, to demand, even in, in biotech markets outside of pharma. The capital is coming not just from these specialists who know the lingo and who have incredible patience for this kind of a bit of an esoteric field to people saying, you know what? Biotech is saving lives as it always has. It's solving billions of lives, hundreds of millions of lives, not just a few lives. And so it's coming to the mainstream conscience, just like the internet did to the software industry, right? Before the internet, the software industry was the purview of highly specialized, investors, tech, high tech, and now all of a sudden everybody has a segment of what they're doing in that. I think biotech is, is, is definitely benefiting from that. It's nice to see more and more people drawn into this type of frontier development. You know, it's the, I guess the wild east as opposed to the wild west.